this is the 2018 paper as you can see and this is part a now i do recommend that you guys read the majority of this this stuff here i don't need to read this i've already gone over this quite a few times but you should read it just to clarify just to make sure everything is okay this is instructions to teachers tutors and or invigilators not really for you but again read it just to make sure you understand outcome for submission this mainly tells you what folders you're supposed to create and the names of the files for example it says here uh, this person's name is joshua smith your registration number is that there and this is their center number this is how you should ideally name the folder that you put your stuff in and the same thing is going to be for part b these are the files that need to be inside this part a folder and it tells you also how to name the files down here we have instructions for learners now this is the part that i think that everybody should make sure that they have written uh, well read properly um, it's kind of a repeat of the previous section in terms of the folders and file names but still please make sure you read it i'm going to go down set tasks now this is where it actually starts to tell you what the scenario is so let me zoom in some more uh, this one is called the black country training assessment i'm guessing this is some company so again always read the assignment well not the assignment the exam brief the scenario what i would do what i've done is once i read it i either highlight on the exam paper directly with a highlighter or pen or pencil or on a piece of blank paper i make notes so right now or even in a word document because you're going to be working in your word document what you can do is simply go to your word document and make some notes so that's what i've been doing but in this video all i'm going to do is read through the entire thing i'm not going to make any notes as of yet read through the entire thing give some context where possible and then in the next video we start doing activity one or task one black country training assessment um, black country training and assessment bctaa offers a vocational based training and assessment services for small and medium-sized businesses let me zoom in some more some training is routine such as running food safety or it skill courses it uses a database of freelance trainers and assessors to meet clients requirements i would make a note of this the fact that it uses freelance people and not in-house hired by the company people freelance doesn't mean they work for free freelance actually means they're contracted so let's just say for argument's sake i want i'm a company i want someone to build me 500 pcs in the next three months to six months what they would do they would come to someone like me that knows how to build pcs that knows how to source parts that knows how to install um, a router and a switch and a wireless printer or a wired printer knows how to set up the operating system they would come to someone like me and they would get me to do the work i am not hired by the company directly as in i work for the company they don't give me a salary what they might say is okay for the next six months we'll give you i don't know three grand every month for the next six months and this is the stuff that we want you to do that would make me a freelancer i am not hired by the company i am simply contracted temporarily and this could be a security issue in some cases so what i would do, i would make a note of that so i'm just i'm just trying to give context um as and where necessary so please bear with me if this video is a bit longer if i read a bit slow i'm trying to give as much context as i can bctaa also develops bespoke training uh, training and assessment for specialized skills such as the maintenance of unusual machinery or working with a unique production process bespoke training requires collaboration with the client and often includes handling uh, highly confidential information such as trade secrets this is very important as well so they hold or they have information on trade secrets what that means a trade secret is something that a company holds dear so then for example the new iphone i think it's 15 or 16 coming out soon the new iphone 15 or whatever it is that's a trade secret of apple and if other companies got hold of that information they might not be able to make much use of it because it's an apple specific device but if for example samsung has trade secrets as well they are going to release a samsung galaxy s23 i believe very soon or s22 if another company that makes android phones gets hold of their trade secrets what they could do they could copy those exact specifications those exact details create the phone either at the same time as samsung or before samsung and that could damage samsung sales that could damage the numbers of the number of items that they sell 
so trade secrets are those that are specific to a company they hold it dear it means a lot to them it could be hardware as in a phone a laptop a pc a game um, a games console it could be software so it could be windows 12 it could be ios whatever version they're on now it could be android 14 whatever trade secrets are it's supposed to be specific to that company and if other people get hold of it it could be damaging in some way full-time training managers meet clients and work with them to create and run a bespoke training and assessment all right nothing near that catches my eye so far bcta is moving from a business park on the outskirts of birmingham to a larger city center premises the company has taken a lease on the 19th floor of a 20-story building and that's the name of the building there this i would make a note of as well maybe not the entire sentence but maybe say moving from uh, or moving to inner city or moving to city center 19th floor of a 20-story building this gives the impression i haven't read the entire thing but this gives the impression that there are going to be other companies inside that building because if they're only renting the 19th floor of a 20-story building that means that the other 19 floors they've rented one floor the other 19 floors are going to have other businesses other companies other whatever it is so they're going to be sharing the space with other companies and sharing the space could be a security risk later on so i would probably make a note of this eh has mic well here we go has a mixed commercial and office usage there we go it tells us straight away the 18 floor is leased by a recruitment agency this uh, there's a restaurant and cafe bar on the 20th floor and a bar cafe on the guard in the garden of the roof i'm guessing on the garden of the roof in the garden of the roof there are several small retail units on the ground floor there is a gym an art gallery and meeting rooms on other floors a number of different companies have office it tells us straight away a number of different companies are office space in the building this is what i would probably make a note of this first one here everything else is not as relevant because we can make the assumption that if there are other companies in the same building and even the floor above on the floor below someone could get access to your stuff at some point so you're the 19th floor for example right there's a floor above you the 20th floor and there's a floor below you the 18th floor someone might press 19 by accident right my eyes are very bad when i go into a lift i have to squint sometimes to look at the numbers so if someone presses 19 they come to the 19th floor um they might be able to i don't know access a wall socket a wall plug um, the wi-fi that you guys use whatever the case is other companies use the space and because of that other people could potentially get access to your stuff either physically as in plugging into one of your usb ports plugging into your ethernet socket or using the wi-fi this is an oh, a, a layout of the building i don't actually remember what wc means but bear with me i will go back and make sure i explain everything control doors so we have doors going uh, both directions we have the stairs here we have the lift in the middle and at the end it says services internet access point patch panel fire alarm panel electrical panel so to be fair someone could uh, i'm guessing i don't know if if this is actually how it works based on this plan someone could potentially get access to the internet access point here and that that could and most likely will be detrimental to the company if the person is there to be nefarious to steal data to steal information let's scroll down some more and see the detail we have a plan of the 19th floor to be leased by bcta is showing in figure one most of the public areas are open outside of normal office hours and the restaurant and bar are popular in the evening i would make a note of this this tells you that when your office is closed when you and your company are not at work there are still people operating in the building your wi-fi might still be active someone might get onto the 19th floor and do some bad things so i would make a note of this the lift stairs wcs and all the area around them are used by the public there we go the remaining area is a single open space that can be partitioned to create rooms or workspaces so this again tells us that those main areas up here this stuff here is used by the public let's see what else we have the 19th floor has many electrical points the data outlets have an optical fiber internet access point the data outlets are connected by cat 6 cable this is just the the rating of the cable which mainly deals with the speed uh, if memory serves me right cat 6 probably goes up to one gigabit per second but I, again don't quote me on this i don't remember these specific details um where was i uh, the data outlets are connected by cat 6 cable to a patch panel near the internet access point bctaa that's the name of the company again will have to set up their own network devices 
So this sounds as if they patch into what's already there and that's how they get their internet access. Again, that could potentially be an issue because that means that they might be sharing the basic or general internet access with other companies in the same building, either from the first floor all the way to 20 or at least the ones above and below. The private areas of the 19th floor are protected by a card reader door control system. Uh, this uses NFC, so near field communication or proximity cards. So the cards that you simply tap on the door and it opens. Similar, similar to those using contactless payment systems. So you know your iPhone you, and your Android phone, you can tap or bring it close to a payment card reader and it pays for it. A similar system can be used to open and close doors. The readers are already in place for each door. The EH management company supplies cards, uh, a card programming device and logging and control software. This could potentially be an issue, an issue because your security protocol, your, your, your door card system is provided by another company. Now, there's no way to know if everyone in this company is good or bad. Just know that this could potentially be an issue. The doors can also be unlocked from the inside by means of a push button. So if you're already inside, you can push a button from the inside to simply open the door. Just as if you're inside your house, you probably have the bolt on the inside that if you turn it, you can close it. If you turn it the opposite way, you can open it. Probably something similar. BCTAA has asked you to advise on setting up and securing its network in its new location. Your contract is Baljinder Singh an experienced computer user who is responsible for the current network. He's not a network specialist. Ooh, 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 this is already a big red flag. The fact that you're a company moving from a small area to a town center means that business is probably going well. The fact that you need someone to set up your network and a person you ask, I'm not a network specialist. I would not recommend me set, setting up a complex network for anyone. If it's simply um, a router or a gateway, um, a switch, a few devices connected to the switch that need configuring, fine. But if it's very detailed network specialist stuff, I wouldn't do it. So it says he's not a network specialist and says that the current system had stuff added when he thought it was needed. Hmm. Not great again. Reason being a network specialist would sit there and hopefully design for now and they would design for potential additions for the future. Whereas this guy simply thought, you know what? I think I need a switch now because um, this, this room alone has 10 devices. The one next door has 10 devices. I don't want to use all the ports on my router. So it would make sense for me to have a switch in this room for all the 10 devices. I have one next door for all those 10 devices and so on and so forth. Whereas a network engineer would have, or a network specialist would have seen this as an issue and done this straight away. Baljinda has produced the basic network design, but wants you to review his ideas and make sure the new system is secure from the start. All right, let's have a look at, I don't, there's not much we can do with this information now. It's after we finish reading everything that we can come back and have a look at this and say, okay, maybe then we can add this or take this away. So I'm just going to briefly go over this electronic door control system that's there. That's also connected to the switch. It seems so the switch, the difference between a switch and a router or a switch and a modem is the modem or the router gives internet access, gives access to the rest of the world. So when you want to connect to the internet, typically from your house, you have a Virgin router, um, um, EE, talk, talk, Vodafone, whatever the case is, right? You connect through that and you get access to, to the internet. What a switch does, it connects stuff inside your network. Okay, I'm, I'm in my room right now and I'm looking at my TV stand area, right? I've got my smart TV there. I've got my Xbox, my PlayStation. I have a laptop, something over there. I have a desktop somewhere. I'm going to have a server. I'm, gonna, I'm buying a server at some point as well. That's six devices already. If I want a nice, easy, simple way of connecting all these devices together, yes, I can use the router that comes from Virgin, because the way they've done routers and now we can actually use them as switches inside of our networks. But let's say I'm a small company. Ideally, I want to have a switch and I want to have devices connected to my switch. And that allows me to speak to everything inside my network. I don't need the Internet to go from my PC when I'm trying to print something to the printer on the opposite side of the office. Right. I don't need the Internet for that. If it's set up properly, I can go or do everything through through the switch. Next, I have. Wi-Fi router with optical fiber and CAT6 connections, optical fiber internet access points. So what this is, um, connected to the main switch and for the main switch to get access to the outside world, it uses the internet access point. Oh, I have a server here as well at the bottom. A server used to store data, files, um, 
whatever files the company deems fit, they'll, they'll store them on a server, website, whatever the case is. Uh, over here we have staff, Wi-Fi and mobile devices. So there's a specific Wi-Fi it seems like for staff and that's also connected to the main switch. We have staff PCs as well that's connected to the main switch. We have guest Wi-Fi and mobile devices. So any guests that come in that have a smartphone, a laptop, a tablet and they want to connect, they have a guest Wi-Fi. This is a good idea. Um, I don't see any firewalls anywhere. I would have probably added a firewall in a few places, uh, maybe after the internet access point, maybe before the main switch. But, but in any case, we're not going to focus too much on this now. This is just us reading over the paper. So the development plan at a meeting with Baljinda, you agree these points on the development uh, of the new BCTAA network. The network will conform to the outline network diagram so whatever he said should be in the network is going to be there we might be able to add a few things but overall it should have what it says the network uses private class c ip4 addresses we don't need to worry about anything here other than maybe private and ipv4 ipv4 and ipv6 are typically what we have ipv4 is still predominantly used in in like computer networks so your laptop your your pc is probably connected via ipv4 your your consoles and so on IPv6 is mainly used for wireless devices such as your mobile phones with 3G, 4G, 5G because IPv6 has so many more addresses. I think it's like 2 to the power of 128 if memory serves right. That's a lot of addresses. So we can essentially have multiple people having multiple, multiple devices around the world connected to the internet and there shouldn't be any issues. IPv4 is all the technology still being used but it doesn't have as many addresses. Private simply means it's inside your network. There are a certain amount of IPv4 addresses that companies use inside a network. So if you guys, if I do see, oh, actually I can't do it here because it will show all my details. If you go to your console and you type in, uh, well, press your start and type CMD. And for Windows, does it come up? One second, CMD, command prompt. For Windows, I believe if you do IF config, this will actually bring up all your internet or all your network connection stuff and you might have your your personal ip address on your laptop as 192.168.1. whatever it is that's what private addresses are is used inside the network the edx celsius internet access system will be kept and will use a fiber optic connection point not uh that okay maybe some something i can pick out from here is that you're going to be using someone else's internet access point. This is not something that you paid for yourself for your specific company. This comes with the building most likely. They're using a fiber optic connection, which means that your data will travel at the speed of light. Number four says the door control system will not be changed. That's fine. Uh, the BCTAA network must be protected against intrusion through the internet. Now, this tells me one or two things or two things. I need a firewall and I need to have some VPN access. Firewall is probably going to be the most um, likely thing to have here. The router must include, oh, it tells us right here, actually, the router must include a firewall and relevant cybersecurity technology to protect the network. Uh, so if there's a server, we're probably going to have a firewall. We're probably going to have some form of DDoS protection. We're probably going to have some form of backup locally, externally on storage medias. Again, I'm going overboard, but I'm just trying to give you context as to what each thing means. Both staff and visitors must be able to connect using mobile devices. That's fine because we have, if I scroll up quickly, we have the, the staff Wi-Fi and we have the guest Wi-Fi as well. So we should be okay for that one. Number eight, some visitors will be clients who may need access to appropriate secure areas of the network. That's fine as well. So what we could do is maybe have a um, have a guest Wi-Fi thing or maybe just put them on staff Wi-Fi temporarily or we create another Wi-Fi thing and we call that one client Wi-Fi and client Wi-Fi might give a bit more access than the, than the typical, um, uh, what's this one called? Guest Wi-Fi. Okay, and again, this is just me freestyling. This is just me reading and trying to understand um, the context of what they want. Freelance trainers and assessors will need access to appropriate secure areas of the network from home or work locations. Perfect. This is going to be VPN. 
So I'm going to leave that first one or these two, uh, so five and six, I'm going to leave those as firewalls. So we're going to have a hardware firewall and potentially a software firewall as well. Let me just quickly explain that. A hardware firewall is going to be a physical device that's maybe attached to your router, your modem or your switch. That's a hardware firewall. A software firewall is just going to be some anti-malware software, some, some firewall program that's installed on the individual PCs. You could even install them on the server so a file so a server is just a a massive big computer maybe 128 gigabytes of ram instead of the typical 8 or 16 maybe 24 cores instead of the typical 4 or 8 so a server is just a pc so I, I can still install operating systems on here i can still install a firewall on here as a piece of software so we could do that as well some staff will need access to secure areas from home or client locations again vpn this tells me straight away vpn a virtual private network will be used to facilitate items okay perfect it, it actually tells us everything we need so 9 and 10 that's going to be vpn let's see what comes next now uh, you must complete all activities in the task read the set task brief carefully before you begin and note that reading time is included in the overall assessment time uh, Baljinda is aware that the BCTAA network is vulnerable to attack. You must, uh, you have been hired to advise on cybersecurity and incident management. You should only consider threats, vulnerabilities, risks, and protection measures that are implied or specified in the set task brief. So this is probably something that we should focus on here. You should only consider threats, vulnerabilities, risks and protection measures so we don't really care about stuff like fires and floods and all of that now if you want to highlight them as something that that is a potential risk or that's something we should try and protect against fine but please don't spend too much time on it and the first activity is going to be activity one risk assessment of the networked system so this is all we care about right now and we're told to duplicate so copy and paste I'm going to stop here. I'm going to leave this part. Activity one is going to be my next video where I open the activity one document. I go over the exam paper again. I make my notes. I start making my list of um, threats that I've picked up on and then show you what comes next. Now, I'm not going to do a massive list of every single threat. I'm going to ma maybe do, let's say, three or four. That is very, very obvious. And you can pick out the rest yourselves. Three or four. And from there, I'm just going to show you how you go through and do the risk assessment for each one and how you do your risk severity matrix. 